Hey, welcome back. This is another exciting episode of Mr. Takeda Teaches Algebra for the year 2020, the year of the lockdown. Hey, I'm glad you're here with me today. This is lesson 2.1, using inequality. So this is just kind of a little introduction lesson on, on what inequalities are. Um, we're going to find later on in this chapter, they're essentially kind of like equations. I call them cousins to equations. There's a lot that they have in common, but they have some very essential differences and uh, so this is just a little a little brief lesson on what are inequalities and we ask the essential question how can you use an inequality uh, inequality to describe a real life statement oh well that sounds kind of interesting i guess let's uh let's see here example one so this is on page 54 from your textbook write each sentence as an inequality uh, a, a number W minus 3.5 is less than or equal to 2. Okay, so uh, these examples are pretty simple because why? Well, they, they break down the inequality symbols into words here. They're not, they're, they're basically calling these things by name. So it gets really easy when they do this. Um, if you're not familiar with these symbols, uh, I'm going to write them for you right now. So hold on a second. Boom, that wasn't even a second. Sometimes I forget when I'm recording these videos, I have the ability to bend time to my will. Okay, <clears throat> so first of all, we have is less than, and it's this little arrow thing pointing to the left. Is less than or equal to uh, the inequality symbol pointing to the left and um, with a little bar underneath. And the little bar is uh, signifies that uh, whatever's on the two sides of this symbol are equal to are equal to each other is greater than well the big uh, it's pointing to the right um, and is greater than or equal to same thing but with a little kind of equal bar underneath it I wish this had a name it might maybe some higher mathematics people call this little bar thing I call it like an equal bar so this one has an equal bar this one does this one doesn't uh, one way to look at it I always look at the front end of the uh, the front end of the symbol and if it's the small if it's the small end to the left it's less than if it's the big end to the left it's greater than that's just the way I remember them okay so oh and one thing also when you use these symbols it always points to the smaller object so okay so if you can't remember which words go with uh, which symbol when you're dealing with numbers always point to the smaller object so here we go uh, letter A, a number W minus 3.5 is less than or equal to 2. Well, so W minus 3.5 is less than or equal to 2. So pretty straightforward. Like I said, it just translates over directly. If I was to read this sentence, the, uh, the, the math inequality, I would read it exactly as sentence A is written there. 3 is less than okay so there we have our s is less than a number n plus five so three is less than a number n plus five and again they're just using the word plus here so we know what symbol that is they're not using the idea of um, something being increased by five they're calling it plus five so these, these are pretty easy examples Zero is greater than or equal to, so there's our, there's our uh, symbol there. So zero is greater than or equal to twice a number x plus one. So twice, this is an interesting word because it indicates for us two things. The number, it means two times, right? So, um, we want twice the number x, so 2 times x, so 2x plus 1. There you go. Okay, so twice is one of these words. It, it, it uh, implies uh, a value, 2, and an operation, multiplication. All right. Here's some vocabulary. You, you need to get this into your uh, notebook. A solution of an inequality, just like an equation, but with inequalities, it's the value that makes the inequality true. 
An inequality can have more than one solution. So if you think about that, if I ask you for a number, give me a number greater than 17, you know, I can have an infinite number of answers, 18, 19, 20, you know, 117, 1,017. So an inequality can have more than one solution. And the set of all solutions of an inequality is called the solution set. So this is the first time we're going to look at the idea of set. So get these into your notes. If you need to pause the video here, please do so. Do a good job taking notes. I'll join you on the next screen. Example two, checking solutions. Well, since we know that the solution for inequality is the value or any value that's going to make the equation true, uh, we want to know in these examples whether four, the number four, is a solution of each inequality. So what we do there is we take the inequality and we substitute in four for x. We're substituting and then we're going to what we call evaluate, which means we're going to simplify and um, we're going to just do the math, as I like to say. We're going to simplify. We're going to evaluate this. So 4 plus 8 is 12. 12 is less than 3. Is 12 less than 3? Am I pointing at the smaller of the two objects, or the smaller of the two numbers? No, I am not. So the answer here is no. Okay. On, on the trying these problems at the end of the video, uh, you'll have one like this, and it's essentially, these are essentially yes or no questions. Tell whether it is yes or no. 4.5 times x is greater than 21. So 4.5 times 4 is greater than 21. Well, let's see. 4.5 times 2 would be 9. So 4.5 times 4 would be 18. 18 is greater than 21. And again here, is that true? And again here, the answer is no. So uh, in this case, um, I just realized, sorry. Uh, so, so to match the book, I realized when I did the, uh, the transfer here from um, the electronic version, when it translated, it dropped a negative sign out here. So if you're looking at the book, your final inequality will say 18 is greater than negative 21, which in this case would be true. Okay, so, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a true statement, so the answer is yes. I kind of messed up that, that last thing there. If it's a true statement, it is a solution, so the answer is yes in this case. Okay, I hope that didn't confuse you guys too much. Let's take the next example here. Uh, oh, this is just, again, a uh, little review here. Representing linear equalities is less than 2, and I kind of did these already for us, right? But on a graph, if it's just less than, we use an open circle, and we call this point, this point is called the boundary. Because the, the, the actual graph of the solution set is going to happen on one side of that boundary. So uh, in this case, the boundary is at 2. Where is x less than 2? To the left of it. And that's where this uh, graph is uh, shown here. To the left of the boundary, x is greater than 2. Um, to the right. Okay, so now if it, x is less than or equal to 2, or greater than or equal to 2, we use a solid dot. And I will refer to these... And this is my own kind of nomenclature, so no one gets confused. I call those solid dots, and I call these open circles. Because technically, circles are, um, they're not filled in. Circles are just the uh, outside. So the cir open circle represent, is used to represent the boundary of a regular inequality. If there's an inequality where it's equal to, then we, uh, it's the solid dot. And if you think about what, how we graphed... Uh, graph solutions for equations on a number line, we use a solid dot. Because this says we're going to include 2 as part of our solution set. Okay, so get this into your notes. And we shall move on. Graphing inequalities. We're going to graph each of these here. And this is pretty straightforward, I think. Y is less than or equal to negative 3. Well, we find negative 3. And we're going to ha we'll put the boundary in. But because it's less than or equal to negative 3, we're going to fill that in. 
and we're going to graph to the left because we want the numbers that are less than negative three. Uh, one thing you might consider doing in this case, two is less than x, but we really read this starting with the variable x is greater than two because I want to know what about what what is it about x that describes the solutions? X is greater than two. And one benefit of putting the variable to the left as we read it, x is greater than two. But my boundary in, well, the, the, the benefit is, is that the graph is going to point in the same direction as the original inequality. See, we're pointing to the left, we're pointing to the left. And then x is greater than zero, and that's pretty much just like that last one. The boundary at zero, open circle, it's not equal to zero, and uh, x is greater. Where are the numbers greater than zero? Well, those are all the positive numbers, so we're going to graph to the right. Okay, so get these into your notes, and if you need to pause it, do that. Example four, writing linear inequalities is on page 57. The graphs show the height restrictions H in inches for two rides at an amusement park. Write an inequality that represents the height restriction of each ride. Okay, well this is pretty much like we just did except kind of backwards. H is our, our variable. So this will be H. And I'm going to the right. So H is greater than or equal to 48. For ride B, this looks like a little kid's ride because in this case H has to be less than 52 inches, but not equal to 52 inches, so we just leave that one like that. Uh, no equal bar. Okay. So before you leave, try these three. These are like the first two examples that we did. I can't, I can't, uh, I wanted to put other types of practice ones in here for you guys on the video, but they, they involve number lines and things like that. And, and our system won't allow you to put those in. Um, number one, when you put it in as an inequality, you can, you can type in this symbol. Now look, I changed this word here a little bit. It's not as easy as the other one, right? Because it changes the name. And then two and three, these are just yes or no answers. All right, so that's it. Thanks a lot, and have a great, great rest of your day. Bye-bye.